Well, thank you very much, Megan, and welcome everyone. So I am uh, going to pass one last time in the Zoom chat all the information, and then I will stop monitoring the Zoom chat and move on to the Slack channel. So um, if uh, people join us late, if uh, Megan, you don't mind maybe copying that info again uh, so that they are informed, that'd be fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, as Megan mentioned, um, you should keep your, your mic off when you're not speaking, but that doesn't mean that you should be shy to speak. I absolutely don't mind being interrupted. And so you're very welcome at any point to unmute yourself to ask a question. If um, uh, something doesn't make sense, you're lost, I'm going too fast or just uh, whatever. And uh, just to make sure to mute yourself afterwards. And the only reason we ask to be muted is to decrease echo. But uh, I don't want that to stop you from uh, interacting. And feel free also to, to post in the chat. I will try to keep an eye on it. And if there are questions, that I do miss during the presentation, I will make sure to answer them afterwards. So, um, so with this, let's get started. So the um, material is on this uh, page and it's there to, to uh, stay. So you are welcome to uh, use it at any time in the future. The, the website will not uh, disappear. So you don't have to frantically take notes. You can just focus on understanding and doing some hands-on. And um, we have set up a, uh, an RStudio server with all the packages installed to make things easier for you. If you have everything installed on your machine, you are welcome to use your machine, but otherwise uh, you should log in to our Jupyter Hub, which will take you to our RStudio server. So I pinned the link in the Slack uh, channel. So please follow the link to um, the Jupyter Hub and you will see a username and a password slot. So for the uh, username, you will need to use any one of these names. So just put uh, your first name or a pseudo or whatever you, you want next to any unused name to claim it. And this is gonna be your username. Be mindful that user is with a lowercase u and that there is no space between user and the two digits. Uh, so be careful about that when you um, enter the username. Also, uh, the link for this document is on the Slack channel. The password is also on the Slack channel. It is HSS in, uh, in lowercase uh, letters, I think, our web in en. So entering all these in here. So I have a different username, but uh, otherwise it's very similar. So for you, uh, you should type user uh, and your two digits. And then enter your password, sign in. It will take uh, a few seconds for your uh, job to be attributed. And you should land to the Jupyter Lab that runs on our Jupyter Hub. So uh, can I get a confirmation that people are following along and that um, you indeed see this? If you have an issue, unmute yourself, jump in, or type in the, in the, in the Slack channel. Uh, and because um, we're not going to use the uh, R can be used as a kernel inside the Jupyter notebook, but here we will use something that I think is even better. It's uh, an RStudio server that you can start by clicking on this button. And that will open uh, RStudio. Now, what you will see here will look different because I have customized my RStudio. So the console will be to the left instead of to the right. You will have a different theme. Uh, but if you join this workshop, I suspect that you are somewhat familiar with R and R Studio. So I imagine that you are familiar with this environment. If uh, you aren't, uh, do let me know and I can uh, help you. So I have all of the content for this workshop is on the website. And um, once we get to the hands-on part, uh, you'll notice there is a little um, 
clipboard symbol on all of the code blocks. And you can simply click on the block to copy the content. And then uh, you can just pass it directly into your R console. If you want, you can also create a script. Uh, also, uh, it's not exactly necessary. And here on my end to make things easier so that I wouldn't have to jump back and forth between the website and the R Studio. I just um, created a script with all of the command. So on my end, I will be running commands directly from the script to the console, but for you, uh, just copy the cells and run them directly in the console. I think that will be the, the simplest. So before we get started into the material, are there any questions about uh, accessing the RStudio server? And is everybody uh, ready to uh, actually try the code once we get to that section? Yeah, just... there seems to be a few questions. Uh, can you repeat the steps to go from uh, the Jupyter interface to RStudio? Sure. In the Jupyter Lab interface, you should see this button here, RStudio. And you just click on it, and it will open our studio, the R Studio server in a new tab. So I, um, I have the R Studio <laughs> server open, but um, the there's there isn't the script that I see uh, yeah. on your on your yeah, screen. That's normal. You don't have a script. Okay. You just have a console, and that's all you need. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Thank you. Yeah. 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 You can create a script if you want. If you go to File, New File, R Script, you can uh, start a new script, and you can type some uh, code in here if you wish, uh, but you don't have to, you can run things directly inside the console. It's really up to you how you use the RStudio server. But yeah, this script is something that I, I prepared in advance just to save time, but you don't have it. Are there other questions? Okay. Yeah, I couldn't oh, log in, showed me invalid username or, or password, but uh, I guess so I make sure. After. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, make sure not to make a typo. Make sure to uh, use the username with look as you. Uh, look at the exact spelling of the password in the Slack channel. Also, sometimes copying and pasting um, can be tricky. You can accidentally pass some hidden characters. So it might be best to type it. Uh, take your time, respect the the case, etc., and uh, hopefully you'll be able to log in. Thank you. Okay, so um, before we actually get started into uh, an example, let's talk a little bit about web, web scripting. So the, the goal of web scripting is really to automate a process that would otherwise be extremely tedious. Uh, most websites have content that is actually publicly available and that is legal to collect. Not all websites. So uh, there is an ethical component here. You, before you uh, engage in any web scraping, you should uh, inspect the website, look, make sure there's no nothing that says that this content is absolutely private and uh, it, that it would be illegal to, to scrape it. But in the vast majority of sites, the content is actually publicly available and it is fine to make use of it for a study or for whatever. But doing this manually would be uh, insanely tedious. So web scraping is really um, the, the idea of using a programming language. You can use Python. In this case, we'll use R. There are other tools to automatically uh, download um, the HTML file of uh, a web page or, or, or the HTML files of an entire site. Uh, the HTML file is the actual content, the raw material of a page. What you see when you open any web page is the rendered version of an HTML file. Uh, there can be additional things running to make things more fancy and dynamic. There, there can be some JavaScript, et cetera. But um, fundamentally, a web page is mostly um, some text written in a markup language called HTML. And it is rendered by your browser into what you actually see. So the first step of these web scripting tools is to download the HTML file that corresponds to the page that contains the data you're interested in. And then in a, as 
automatically and as uh, easily as possible extract from this HTML page all of the data you want and put it in a format uh, such as a, a data frame or a, a vector or a, an array, whatever, that is convenient for you to then process the data. So, um, <clears throat> oh, and I hear a little bit of a quick, so if, so, okay, yeah, I will mute the person. Yeah, there we go. Um, so let, let's talk a, a little bit about HTML. And some of you might be extremely familiar uh, with this already. So bear with me um, if that's the case. But if you have no idea about the syntax of HTML, uh, all you need to know really to get started about where it's creeping is the uh, overall architecture of an HTML file. HTML markup usually has some tag that is uh, between some uh, greater than and lesser than uh, signs. Uh, and like that's an opening tag and then a closing tag. And the closing tag in between those greater than and lesser than sign has a, a forward slash. So uh, some tag uh, here should be replaced by B for instance for bold. So in this expression here, uh, the tag is B and uh, this is bold, that's the, the, the text, the content, but the B and forward slash B in between those signs uh, indicate that this is bold should be formatted in bold character. Uh, paragraphs similarly are identified with the P tag. Uh, headings are identified with H uh, tags with the level. So H1 is an aging of level one, H2 is an aging of level two et cetera, et cetera. There are um, some uh, tags that don't have an opening and a closing tags. There are a number of symbols that are a little bit different. So this pattern is not uh, always exactly like this, but it's a very, very common one. So when you open a, a full HTML file, you will see there, is, there are tags for the entire file that set um, the HTML format. Then there is a first very big section that is called the header. So there will be a header tag and then a bunch of info and then the, the closing header tag. And everything in the header says things like uh, the author, the title, the date, uh, the language, uh, packages that are being used, all sorts of um, stuff like that. And then there is the site itself below and that's the actual content. Uh, some tag also have an attribute name. For instance, so following this format, for instance, um, URLs, um, like this is an HTML page. So here is a, a URL. Each URL is encoded in HTML in this fashion. The tag is A, so you have an opening A tag and the closing A tag uh, in between the, the classic symbols. But in addition to the tag, there is an attribute name. The, the name is href in this uh, particular case for a, a URL link. And the value uh, of this attribute is the actual URL. So this is the text of a link is what you will see. For instance, here on this link, the, the text is HTML and CSS. So that's what you will have here. Now, if I click here, that takes me to some place that some place that's the URL that is in here. So um, even if you have never learned anything about HTML, this should be enough really for you to uh, uh, scrape web pages. And the reason this will be sufficient is that there are now some little tools that make the process of finding the information that you're interested in in a page incredibly, incredibly easy. When you want to scrape a page, you could uh, look at the uh, web inspector and do a lot of uh, work on your own, but you can also uh, install, or install is not even the, the right word. You can uh, go to a page uh, that's called selector gadget. It's a little tool that was built um, by someone and just drag the link into your uh, bookmark uh, tab and then clicking on this little gadget will automatically 
uh, identify elements that you're interested in in an HTML page. And I'll, I'll show you how. So don't worry if uh, this is a bit uh, obscure and very new to you. One last thing that I'd like to, to say about websites is that in addition to the HTML uh, page, there are often some CSS or even SCSS files. And those files set the formatting of the tag elements. Uh, for instance, uh, if you have, uh, here you have a P flag. So uh, all paragraphs are gonna be in between P flags. Uh, a CSS might, for instance, have the customization for those P flags. So it's gonna set the line height um, inside paragraphs, the font size inside paragraph, um, and, and things like that. So CSS is for the, the, the formatting of the tags, and the tags are the, the markers of what should be formatted with uh, one thing or another. Are there any questions on this uh, extremely uh, brief overview of HTML. It will make a lot more sense once we get started. But let me uh, drop just for one second. I need to just a little something in here. OK. <coughs> Sorry about that. OK, so the first thing that uh, we should do is really to uh, get started into an example so that as you go about it, you will, um, everything will make a lot more sense. So I chose uh, a site. It's this site here. You can find the link on the website. I can also uh, paste it in the Slack channel. Yeah, I pasted it in the channel. So it's, um, from the University of Tennessee. And it is a, an, a, a database of their PhD uh, thesis. So there are 74 such pages, but we're not gonna harvest all 74 pages uh, because this is just a, an example. We will only deal with the very first page. So our goal, is for all of the PhD theses from the University of Tennessee uh, that are shown on this page, we want to extract some data. So on this page, we have a number of links. Each link, which corresponds to one particular um, uh, PhD, takes you to a page with some information. And the information we are interested in uh, are um, I don't remember exactly what I wanted, so let me, because uh, I didn't invest the entire, uh, well, actually, I could go back here. Uh, we want <clears throat> the date, so the date at which the PhD was uh, published the uh, discipline, like the major, so the, the, the field, and the uh, supervisor, so the, the PI or principal in investigator. So for each um, thesis, we want those three elements. So uh, for this particular thesis, the very first one, you can see, for instance, that the date is uh, May 2023. The major is chemistry, and the PI is Craig E. Barnes. So without a web scripting tool, we could uh, click all of those links one by one and copy past, okay, so date this, uh, major that, uh, professor this. Like we could copy past and create a nice little data frame with the data we want. But uh, you can see how insanely tedious that would be. So instead, we will uh, do this uh, programmatically with R, and this involves a two-step process. First of all, we want to scrape this page here and get all of those links, because to access the information of um, uh, an individual thesis, I need the link so that I can then get into 
the page of that particular thesis. So step one, we will scrape all those URLs and we will create a list with all of the URLs. Step two, uh, for each of those links, we will uh, uh, download the HTML of the thesis page and then uh, scrape the date, the major and the professor. And because we, we want to do the same for every single thesis, we will use a for loop to go over uh, every single link in our list to extract those three pieces of element. So step one, we want to uh, uh, get a list in R, an R list, of the URLs of uh, all the theses that appear on this page. How do we go about that? So there is, I'm gonna close this actually, oops. Yeah, there is uh, one package called Rvest. It's one of the packages from the Tidyverse. You might be uh, very familiar with the Tidyverse if you've used R um, already because the Tidyverse has really uh, um, grown in popularity tremendously. Uh, it's a suite of packages uh, that have a fairly modern vision of R and try to standardize, standardize its syntax. A lot of the packages have, have been developed by uh, Hadley Wickham and others. And a lot of the people who have written those packages are actually from the POSIT, formerly uh, RStudio company that also developed the RStudio IDE. And so one of the tidyverse package is called Harvest, and it's uh, exactly for this. So the first thing that we are going to do is to load this package. Now, if uh, you um, want to do all of this on your machine, you, you will have to install Harvest before doing anything else. Uh, because we have set the RStudio server for you, the package Harvest is already um, installed, so you just have to load it. So the way you can do this again, uh, since your RStudio looks different than mine, you can, uh, you can type in the console, but you can also just uh, click from the, the website and then pass it on your console and then press enter to run it. Now, um, because I have a script, what I can do here is simply by pressing control enter, send the code from my script to the console. So that's what I will do from now on. I will simply run things from the script to the console, but don't get distracted by the fact that uh, it's different for you, for you just uh, type in the console or copy paste in the console. Are there any questions uh, so far? Don't hesitate to unmute if uh, anything is unclear. Okay, so step one, we want to go from this uh, website, this web page, to a list with all of the uh, URL for all of the dis uh, dissertation as uh, uh, characters. So we want to turn this into a character vector. The very first step is to read in the HTML data. So basically, uh, we will download the HTML that uh, underlies this web page that is rendered by your browser to produce what you see. And we will create uh, an object called HTML with that. So the uh, function from the Harvest package that allows to download uh, an HTML page is read underscore HTML. So we need to pass to this function uh, a URL as a character. So uh, you could type read HTML and then between quotes the uh, website, or uh, we can split it in two, uh, two steps. You can create first uh, a URL object. So that's a, a character vector of length one with the URL and then pass it into read HTML. So let's do that. So first I create uh, URL, so uh, URL is my URL, uh, 
the structure of URL is a character uh, of uh, character vector in fact of size one. Okay, so now I pass it as an argument to read HTML and I create an HTML object. And uh, if I look at my HTML object, if I print it, you can see that it is an HTML document. So uh, this object is actually very long, but um, R nicely doesn't output everything, but in those dot, 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 that's actually a ton of things. So as I told you, uh, an HTML page has two sections, one big section at the start between a, a head opening tag and a head closing tag as all of the metadata for this site, the, the title, the author, etc. And then you have the actual content of the site in uh, a, an opening and a closing body tags. So this is why um, the we have two lines here, the read HTML function as extra has downloaded this uh, the HTML uh, data from the, the site and it has created uh, two lines, one with all of the head information, one with all of the body information. So now the data we want is in our HTML object. It's in there. But of course, uh, it's mixed in with a ton of uh, HTML tags and all sorts of stuff we absolutely aren't interested in. So now we want to uh, extract the relevant information. If you're a bit, if you're curious about um, this uh, HTML object, you can look at its structure and its type, but um, it's basically a list of two elements and uh, its structure is a uh, is not something we, um, we need to, to spend that much time on because we will uh, simply use it to extract the elements we want from it. So there are two functions. One is HTML underscore element, singular, and the other one is HTML underscore elements that allow to extract in the singular version, the first occurrence in the plural version, all occurrences of uh, the content of any tag. So if we go back to the structure of an HTML tag, uh, if, for instance, we use uh, this function HTML element on, uh, say, H2s, so the headers of level two, that will automatically extract the content of all of the H2 element in our big HTML file. So it's a very powerful function, but we need to know where our uh, elements are. So one way would be to uh, look at the HTML and look, uh, identify where our, uh, the elements we're interested in are and then read the HTML around. But we will use this little selector gadget I mentioned and if you want to install it, I think I have a link to it. Um, yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a, a little um, JavaScript uh, bookmarklet and you can simply uh, the, drag this, move it to your uh, uh, bookmark bar, and that's it. It will uh, appear in your bookmark mark bar. So um, you can go to this page. I will, it's in the, the site, but I will paste it in the Slack channel. Uh, so uh, if you go there, you just have to drag this little bookmarklet, bookmarklet in the bar. You can also install the Chrome extension. Uh, there's, uh, there, are, there are multiple ways to go about this, but really the simplest way I think is just to, to drag it uh, in the bar. And you can see it was updated in 2013. So it, it's an old tool. It's been, it's been around for a long time, but it just makes things simpler. So you don't have to use it, but you'll see how um, convenient it makes things. So 
once you have this little bookmarklet, just open the, the page you're interested in and uh, click on the selector gadget. And you will see that there is a little, uh, a little box that has uh, opened. And you'll see also that as you move around the page, there are some um, orange boxes that appear around the elements that you are hovering uh, over. So what we are interested in are um, those URLs. So over over one of the URL and click enter. So I told you that URLs are uh, marked with an A tag. So not surprisingly, you can see in the little floating bar here that A has appeared because indeed we are interested in uh, links. Now, everything that has uh, a yellow highlighting on top of it are all of the elements in the site that correspond to the A tag, meaning all of the links in the page. So we could go with that, but we can do much, much better because we, we don't want to scrape every single link in the site. We only want to scrape those links that lead to uh, a PhD thesis uh, page. We're not interested in those links here, those links there. So um, what we can do now is um, select a second element that corresponds to what we want. Or no, actually, um, I think, yeah, I, I don't remember how to use it. So let me, let me try something. Uh, hmm. Uh, or maybe, shoot, I don't remember because that's not, I, I go through the HTML file. I don't use the bookmarklet to do it. And I, I was doing it successfully, but uh, let me restart. Sorry, I, uh, I got it um, a few days ago. And then of course, since I have zero memory, I forgot. Um, Okay, uh, how did I get it to work? Perhaps if you keep control and... No, 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 it was a question of, um, first you select one element you want, uh -huh. and then you exclude elements you don't want or you select another element you want and it kind of narrows the search, but I don't remember how. Uh, yeah, but control, if you keep control, press ah, all the- Okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. No, no, that, that's, uh, that, sorry, yeah, I, I got it. So uh, yeah, maybe there are some options with control, but the, the, I think the way it works, and I apologize for uh, my terrible memory, so you click on selector gadget. Um, so there's no nothing selected at first. You first select one of the elements you're interested in. So we're interested in those uh, URLs. So you select an URL and then you click. So that highlights every single link in the page in yellow. So at this point, we have the tag, which is A, for all of the uh, URLs, but we don't want every single URL. We just want the URL that corresponds to a thesis. So um, now, if you over over some of your selected, or if you over over any of your of the yellow elements, you can see that the box instead of being orange is now red. So that's a way to exclude elements. So if, for instance, I click on this link. That's a link I'm not interested in. Uh, so the, the box is red around. I have excluded all of the links that are not relevant. So now you can see that in yellow, I only have the URLs I am interested in. The way it works is that at first, uh, the little uh, script doesn't know what you want. You select the first URL. So the script is like, okay, uh, she wants URLs. So all of the URLs are selected in yellow. But then if you exclude uh, any of the URLs you don't want, 
it means that what you want are URLs with only the characteristic of that first URL you selected. And that characteristics is uh, a class that's called dot article listing. So there are two tags, uh, I mean, one tag and one class, exactly to, to be more uh, specific, that match the elements that I'm interested in. Does that make sense? Um, sorry, I, I'm I'm having trouble seeing that article. Uh, I, I just see the tag PA when I hover over. Can you just show okay. again how you get to the article? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's do it again. And I apologize. I at first I uh, I messed up. So let let's redo it. No problem. So you click on select our gadget, and there's nothing at first. If you got PA, you might have selected something too broad. Um, um, like for instance, here I'm selecting the article listing, which is uh, this whole paragraph. And that works too, because now I could, well, now it's very hard to exclude things. So make sure, be careful where you click. If uh, we want the URL, so don't click uh, here. If you, if you look carefully as you over, like I'm overing here, and if you look carefully at the bottom left of the orange rectangle, you can see div p. So that p is the p of paragraph that we already saw. So that means that here I would be selecting a paragraph. I'm not interested in the paragraph because the paragraph also contains the uh, author of the thesis. What I want is just the URL. So this is not good. What I want instead is to move here, like to point exactly at the uh, link. And here I can see at the bottom uh, left of the orange rectangle, rectangle, PA. So that means that I'm interested in the A, so the actual uh, URL inside paragraphs. So this is good. So I click here. And as, I, as soon as I click, you can see in the, the floating box at the bottom that A has been selected. So now um, everything that would be scraped with the A flag is highlighted in yellow. And it's basically every single URL in the site. So we can do better with this tool. We can refine our search. Now, if I move around on, um, any of the selected elements, so any of the uh, URL, you can see that the box is now uh, red. Like here it's orange, but here it's red. So red means is a way to exclude uh, from the selection some of the, uh, to exclude some of the elements that have been selected so that the targeting can be more precise. So the PDF link here would uh, allow me to download the thesis. I'm not interested in that kind of URL. So as I over over the link, I can see another PA at the bottom left of the square, but this time it's in the red square. If I click here, I have now excluded those uh, PDF links from my selection. And I have also uh, automatically excluded this link and that link and all the other links because it now makes sense for the little script that I was interested in URLs that matched only these, these ones uh, and not all URLs. So I still have the little A tag that uh, was uh, selected at first, but now I have another element that has appeared here is dot article listing, which is uh, a class in the HTML um, um, it's, it's an HTML class in this document. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's perfect. Sorry, I, I actually, yeah, I just misclicked. So that's that's great. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I and, and I and I did it successfully a few days ago, but then I forgot. So uh, uh, yeah, I, I just couldn't remember how it works. So it's it's super simple, very straightforward. Once you remember how to use it. Can so, I ask a question? Me, <clears throat> of course. Yes. Um. Why, um, I'm a little confused, but why excluding the PDF links also excluded these uh, um, other links on in the menu on the left? Sure. So in the HTML file, you have uh, a bunch of links and uh, these links 
uh, belong to different classes. The links here, for instance, uh, they are list links. Uh, instead of uh, having a PA, so instead of uh, being a link inside a paragraph, it's a link inside the list because this is a list here. Uh, the, this, this one is, uh, well, so anyway, they, they all, all of the links uh, are associated with different elements and different classes. So at first, when we select a link, we are selecting this big uh, category, but by excluding um, one subcategory, the gadget automatically understands that we were interested in. Uh, oh, I see. I okay, I get it. So it by just the second the second one excludes everyone that wasn't the first one. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, okay. yeah, exactly. That's what I was trying to explain. You actually said I, okay, it. Okay, I, I didn't mind that we were we are deselecting one at a time, but no, no, it's no. Okay. yeah, no. It's actually it's actually even better than that. that. That could have been built that way. You could have had to deselect um, uh, like the lists and the but the, the the gadget actually works very well. Yeah, so that's exactly that. It excludes. Uh, uh, the the things that don't match exactly what we had selected. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like that. The, the I, again, that's not how I function. That's that's very uh, straightforward, very easy. But the the harder way to do it, and which is what I'm I'm used to doing, is to actually uh, look at the HTML file through uh, a web inspector and read the HTML and identify this. Uh, um, manually, but this is actually a lot nicer, uh, particularly if you're not super familiar with with HTML. So it's it's a great tool. So uh, here you can see that it even tells you the number of elements that have been selected. So at first we had many more because there were all the links. Here we have a hundred, and that's that's perfect. We know that this is right because each uh, page on this website has. Uh, 100 theses listed. So we have all of those URLs selected, 100 elements, so that's great. So this little selector gadget, all it does, it doesn't do any extracting or anything, or all it does is that it allows us to some very uh, user-friendly way to identify those things here. So dot article listing and a. So then we can close it and uh, uh, we can actually go back to our script because we know what we need to select. So article listing is a, a class. So we want those article listings. So this is the what we can pass into HTML element and you need to quote it. So um, for those who are not familiar with the pipe, the pipe is uh, one of the elements. It actually uh, comes from the Magritte R package that is automatically uh, loaded when you load Harvest. It's one of the, these things from the tidyverse. Uh, this uh, here uh, would be, uh, is exactly the same as writing it this way. Uh, this is the more traditional way of writing uh, code. So, you, the HTML element requires two, uh, the HTML element function requires two arguments. The first one is the object from the, so the HTML uh, object from which you want to extract some information. And the second one is uh, the class you want to extract. And so by running HTML, HTML element on HTML and article listing, I can uh, create a new object that I'm calling here text with all of, with the uh, first article listing. Uh, the pipe functions in a similar fashion as the a a bash script uh, pipe, for instance. It allows to pass what is on the left side of the pipe as the first argument of the function that is on the right side. So, uh, the HTML object here, which is the first argument of this function, I can move it to the left, put a pipe, and pass as the argument of HTML only the second and uh, possibly other arguments. So this is equivalent. The reason I am using this is uh, later on, we will be chaining some uh, comments. So we will apply 
uh, one function to an element, create a new uh, an output, and then pass another function to it, etc. And um, to do this in the traditional uh, syntax, you have to have nested functions, and that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But nested functions can be a little bit harder to read. Uh, the pipe makes it more human readable, more intuitive, maybe. So I I opted for this syntax, but. Don't let that distract you. Uh, just remember, these are uh, absolutely equivalent uh, expressions. OK, so I am creating this test object. Why am I uh, calling it test? Because this is just a test. Because HTML element only extract the very first element that matches the uh, class uh, you are using here. So when we used the inspector gadget, um, the selector gadget, sorry, I said that several times already. <laughs> My childhood is catching up with me. If, when, you, when we use the selector gadget, we had 100 elements that were highlighted in yellow. So we know that we have 100 uh, elements uh, that correspond to the article listing class. But before you extract them all, it's nice to extract just the one, to make sure things work, to make a test. And uh, so to extract them all, and we'll do that later, you, you, you would use HTML elements with an S. But with the singular expression here, the, the function without the S, just extract the very first uh, element matching this. So we're only going to get. Uh, we're only after that very first URL for the newest of the thesis to make sure our code works. OK, so I'm creating tests. So let, let's explore that new object. So its type is a list. OK, let's print it. OK, so you can see here, so it's still uh, some HTML type object. Uh, here we had HTML was some kind of HTML document. Here it's an HTML node. So it's a, it's a smaller uh, element, but it's still some HTML stuff. And um, you can see here, the, uh, you, P is a paragraph, class article listing. So we have extracted a paragraph with the, uh, art the first article listing of the uh, of our page, and uh, this is indeed the site we wanted. You can recognize the a tag with the href with the URL, and then um, this is cut by R. But the here in between the opening a tag and the closing a tag, there is the actual uh, uh, words that are written on top of that URL. And if you go back to uh, the site, uh, where is my uh, Oh, did I close it? Oh, no, it's here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, indeed, the, so the, the URL is uh, uh, trace.tennessee, et cetera, et cetera. You can see it at the bottom in the little pop-up. But the text is the novel chlorination of et cetera, et cetera. So um, indeed, the URL is a, a trace, Tennessee, blah, blah, and the, the rest is the novel. Blah, blah. But what we are interested in is only the URL. And remember that uh, using the selector gadget, we had two uh, elements of interest. We had the class article listing. Uh, you knew it was a, a class if you know a little bit about uh, HTML because it started with a dot. But it also had the A tag. So um, we want to extract this uh, the URL part of, uh, the, of the test object that we created. So there are two possible options to go about that. Uh, you can use HTML element again and uh, uh, use A. Uh, remember, the selector gadget gave us dot article listing and A. So uh, we've already extracted dot article listing. Now we can uh, extract A from it. So uh, from my test object, I pass it to HTML element, and this time I extract A. And then if I, so I'm calling it A test, 
A for the A tag. Uh, if I print A test, uh, you can see that uh, now I have reduced things a little. I still have an HTML node, so I'm not there yet, but it's a lot better. I have extracted the A part to it. Um, and then um, the uh, if you remember uh, at the very top when I talked about HTML, uh, in, a, in a link, what is after the href is the attribute value. href is an attribute name. And uh, so it's, a, it's a, the name of an attribute. So it's, a, it's an attribute. So yeah, so href is an attribute. And the URL we want is its value. So now we want to extract the value of the uh, attribute. So uh, to do this, there is a different function from the harvest package that is called HTML underscore at. So if we pass a test to this HTML at and the value we're interested in is the value of the uh, attribute href, like you can see here, uh, we get uh, the actual link. So I'm calling, I'm creating a new object that I'm calling link test. And if I print link test, uh, I get exactly what I want, which is just the URL. Uh, and if I look at its structure, it is a character. So that, that's perfect. That's just exactly what I want. Uh, another option, um, well, we don't have a ton of time, so let's, let's keep it at that. There, there are, Sometimes there are various ways to get to the same place, but let's um, let's keep it simple because it's actually uh, we are running out of time pretty quick. So this is great. I have uh, the URL for the site, and that's great because at the beginning, uh, to if you want to harvest a site, the first thing you want is to pass uh, into read HTML the URL as a character. Uh, and uh, I want to harvest all of the thesis sites. So having the URL of uh, the sites as a character is perfect because then I will be able to read them in and, and keep on harvesting things. So let, let's try it. Let's try to extract everything for this first site before we do it for uh, the entire site. And I'm just going to look at the time. Yeah, OK. Yeah. So um, I, what do I want now? Well, let's go back to the same uh, method with our little inspector. So if I click on the first link, let's open the selector uh, gadget to uh, select what I want. The first thing I want is the uh, date. So the same thing, I over, over the date. You can see it's a div key, so it's a, it's a paragraph. I click on it. So all paragraphs are selected now. And you can see key uh, is written in my little hovering bar. But I only want the date. Uh, I'm not interested in scraping every single element from this page. I just want the date. So you can click on any of the other elements, as we did previously, and it's deselect everything except for our first element. So you can see that there's a single element selected. And so it's a paragraph. It has the P tag. But very important, there is this uh, hashtag publication underscore date. So that's super important. That's the information we uh, wanted to know how to extract the date, the publication date from the site. So uh, that means that I can, um, I'm going to type it here. I have, uh, uh, I had called it, called it uh, HTML uh, test. So HTML, oh no, test, test. HTML test is my, uh, uh, no, it's, uh, Oh, yeah, no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm at, um, I'm at link test. So yeah, we're here. Link test is the link. 
before I can extract anything from this new page, of course, I have to download the HTML and create um, uh, an object that I can then um, uh, play with. So we do the same thing we are doing at the very beginning. I pass link test, which is my new link, into the read HTML function. That's the function we use at the, at the top. And I'm creating an object that this time I am calling HTML test. Okay. So if I print it, now I have the same uh, type of HTML object that we had at first for the front page, but this time it's for the first PhD page. Um, and then we saw from um, uh, the thanks to the little inspector that um, we need to extract this hashtag uh, underscore publication date uh, p so i can uh, use html element again oh I copy past. Uh, I could also uh, just select and run some part, but I never use RStudio. Uh, I use uh, R in Emacs, so I'm not used to the all the functionality all that well. So I I can do this doing exactly the same thing we've been doing before, um, but this time for the new element uh, on the new page and. That doesn't work. I get this very weird thing. So there is another function in Arvest, HTML text two, that allows to extract the text out of an element. When I extracted publication date P, because uh, I'm using a P here, I'm extracting a paragraph. So I'm extracting a paragraph, but what I want is just the text of that paragraph. So this result, I need to then uh, pass it through this HTML text to function. So if I do this, let's see if I, can I select and run just this? Yes, okay, great. So if I uh, do what I just did, but then pass the result to HTML text to, instead of having this HTML node object with the paragraph, I'm, the HTML text to function allows me to extract the actual text from the paragraph. Um, earlier on, for instance, if I had used the HTML text to function uh, on the uh, A tag, I would have extracted the text uh, of the link. That's not what I was interested in because I was interested in the URL it itself, which is part of the tag, which is why I didn't use that function earlier. But if I had been interested in just the, the title, the, the, the visible part uh, of, the, of, the, of the link, which is like the part of the content, not part of the metadata, I could have used it as well. Um, so I'm not being very clear with all that. I hope you're more or less understanding. I'm a bit, uh, a bit messy, but HTML text two allows to extract the text part of when you have some tags and some content, uh, when you have something like that, for instance, so some tag and some content, uh, the HTML underscore text two function allows you to extract the content. So when we had um, at first extracted the uh, A uh, elements, the A um, uh, for, for all of the URLs, if I had used that same function, I would have had the content. I didn't do that because what I was in fact interested in in that case was the URL. So I was interested in some of the metadata, something in the tag, which is why I used uh, HTML element again uh, to narrow things down. But in this case here, we're not interested in uh, the P flag or something that's in the P flag. We're interested in the content of the paragraph. So whenever you need to extract some uh, actual text, you need to use HTML2 element. So uh, first, 
to recap what I did on this uh, single uh, thesis page, I first, from the character uh, of the URL, I downloaded all of the HTML and I created an object. Then I extracted from that object uh, the hashtag publication underscore date P, which is what the selector gadget told me I wanted. But I want to, from that particular paragraph with a publication date, I want to uh, actually only have the text. So I've then passed that to HTML text two, and I get the text in the character form. So as a little exercise, uh, try to do the same thing to get the, uh, the um, uh, how do they call it? The major. So the major is chemistry. Of course, we could uh, simply copy past chemistry because it's a, it's a one word thing. So you may wonder why we go through all this trouble, but we go through all this trouble because then we want to do that for all 100 sites and we could do uh, all 100 um, theses and we could do this for many more theses. So we want to have a script that automatically extracts uh, uh, here chemistry, so like the, the field. So it's going to be very, very similar code, but instead of um, extracting the date, I want now to extract chemistry. So the solution is in the site, but you can try to uh, play with the selector and, and see if you can get it on your own. Okay, so let's try it because we don't have that much time. So I click on the selector. Uh, what I want this time is chemistry. So I click here, but I exclude the other ones. Okay, so this time it's still a paragraph P, but it has the hashtag department. So I run the exact same code I've been running, but um, I replace a hashtag publication date with hashtag department. So I'm creating um, an object here that I'm calling major test. So let's run this. And if I print major test, indeed, okay, I got chemistry. And then because I wanted to have the PI, I do the same thing for the PI and the uh, little gadget tells me it's underscore ad advisor one. So I do the same thing and I create a PI underscore test object. And if I print it, that's indeed the PI. Okay, great. So I have all three elements, the date, the chemistry, the, I mean the major and the PI, uh, but uh, it would be nice to uh, bind them all together. So I'm passing them to CBind, C bind, and I'm creating a result test. No, oh, date test not found. Oh yeah, I didn't uh, run it. I had just run part of the code. Okay, so I'm running this. And if I uh, print results test, I have uh, uh, the date, the chemistry, and the PI all in a nice little output. Okay, it's actually a, a matrix. Uh, CBind uh, creates a, a matrix here. So that's great, but now I want to do that for every single thesis. So I will uh, go back and do exactly the same thing, except I will use HTML elements to uh, extract every single article listing instead of just the first one. And I'm gonna, uh, so I start from my HTML object that I had created by uh, reading in the URL for the, the main site. I'm, I'm gonna create a dat um, object this time, because that's a, it's our, our actual data this time. It's not a test, it's a real thing. So, okay, let's print our data. So you can see that uh, I get the same thing I had before, but I have uh, now a uh, hundred output. And so uh, in the P class article listing, I have 
all of those links as I, as I had before for a single one. So it's type, it's a list, and its length is 100 because indeed I there are 100 uh, URLs, there are 100 theses on this first page. Um, so the type of that is a list. To extract the first element of a list, you have to use nested square brackets uh, next to the list. So that uh, and two sets of square brackets extract elements from a list. So one, since uh, indexing in R starts at one, would extract the very first element of a list. So uh, that square bracket, bracket one, that's the first element of a list. That's exactly what we had before when we only scraped the first link. Uh, and if I look at its type, it's the little list uh, I had at first. So our big that element is a list of lists. So it's a list that contains a hundred lists. And every single element is a list that has, that has the URL of a, a thesis. Uh, so uh, you can look at the, the second one. Uh, ah, yeah, I have to uh, run. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of um, uh, keeping things as a list, I will, um, oh no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, okay, so I'm good. I have my list of lists. Now, I want to do all of the things that I did earlier to extract the URL out of my HTML object, but I want to do that in a loop because I want to do that for every single uh, element of my uh, list. Because now I have a hundred lists in my big list. I want to apply what I've been applying to one single uh, element to every single one. So before you run a for loop, it's very, very important to create an empty container so that the uh, memory is allocated uh, for the final result. It's very, very slow and you should absolutely avoid uh, growing a vector or a list or a matrix uh, uh, during a loop. If you don't pre-allocate the memory by creating an empty container at each iteration uh, the your object will grow and this is incredibly inefficient so this is an important step i'm creating an empty container that i'm calling list links and ultimately this object will contain the list of all my urls for all of the dissertation pages um, so to create an empty uh, list, I use the vector function. List is the type of my vector and uh, the length uh, is the length of that. And we've already seen that the length of that is 100 because we have a 100 element. So with this, I am uh, creating uh, an empty list. If I look at its structure, list, list links. Uh, I have uh, uh, this uh, list, uh, uh, it's empty, so that's why I have null for every single element, and that's 100 element. The length is 100, and if I look at one element, for instance, the second element, you can see it's null, it's empty. Okay. Now, I'm going to fill in that list with the data we want. So I'm using a for loop, uh, so I'm going to iterate over sec along that, so that is my list of lists. Sec along is a way to iterate over all of the elements of uh, an iterable. Uh, a list is an iterable, meaning that I can iterate over every single element it contains. Um, so I is gonna uh, uh, go at each iteration over a different element of that, that being my list of lists. And at each iteration, I'm gonna uh, extract element i, and I'm going to uh, run the same code we already tried on uh, our test uh, example at first. Well, when we tested the code, we saw that uh, taking the our um, uh, object and extracting the HTML element a, and then uh, extracting the HTML attribute href was giving us a nice uh, character of the URL. So I'm going to do this by indexing 
uh, that uh, by I. So at first, I'm going to take the first element of my list and then the second element of my list. And I'm going to assign that into my empty list. So I'm going to assign it to the first element of my empty list, second element of my empty list, etc. So let's run this. Uh, I don't know, uh, I had not uh, put the cursor in the right place, so I hadn't sent the, the, full, um, the full loop to the console. Okay, so remember that the second I chose arbitrarily element of list links was null. Now I have filled in my list. So if I look at the same second element, I can see that I have a nice URL and that's the URL for the second um, thesis page. So perfect, great. Now, from one URL, we know how to, we, are, we have already tested the code on how to extract the, the date, the uh, uh, department, and the PI. So I have a list of 100 URL. I'm going to uh, run another for loop, and I'm going to uh, extract all of uh, that information for every single thesis. So same thing, I want to create an empty container. So I'm calling it list data. To create an empty list, again, I uh, use the vector function. First argument is the type of vector I want. Uh, I want a list. Second argument is its length. The length is uh, the length of list links, which again is 100. So. I'm creating my empty list. And here is my big loop. So uh, for each element of cycle long list links, I am doing exactly all of the things that I did on my test URL. So I'm going to first um, read in the, uh, the download the HTML from the URL using read HTML to create my HTML element, then extract publication date and turn it into text to, to get the date, um, extract department P and turn it to text for the major, and extract advisor 1P, turn it to text for the PI. Now, here, this is not uh, necessary for the code. But when you uh, scrap websites, if you do it too fast and you scrap too, uh, too many elements, some sites may block you. So if only uh, one or two of us were running the code, we totally wouldn't need this line. But because uh, there's quite a bit of us that are, might be running this code at the same time, uh, I don't want the site to block us by um, sending too many requests at too high a frequency. How many requests per, say, second um, does it take for a site to block the request? Totally depends on the site. It depends how the site was written. Uh, and I tried to gather the information for that site, but it wasn't available. So I'm not sure uh, at what a frequency of request, this site may block us. So to be on the safe side, I'm adding a very small delay. Uh, sleep just, um, uh, it's just a little pause if you want. It just waits for the amount of time in second that is written in there. So I'm waiting for one tenth of a second, which is very little, but at each iteration, there's gonna be this little delay and it um, reduces the risk of getting blocked. And then, as we did before, I'm passing the date, major, and PI into C bind. Uh, and I'm uh, going to uh, assign this to uh, my uh, list data, which is my empty container that I created. And because it's a for loop, it will do this for every single link, so every single uh, URL. And in the end, this data will have uh, all of the data we want. So let's run this. So this is going to take a little bit of time because we know that there are a hundred URL plus I added a, a, a tiny delay. So I am downloaded a hundred HTML pages and then uh, extracting some element and then waiting a little bit. So there is a little, little time. Uh, you can see that R is working first because 
I don't have a prompt being returned here. And also there was a little stop sign over there. If uh, you want to stop a process that is running, you can click on the little stop button and it will interrupt the R process. The stop sign disappeared. I regained my prompt. So that means that my list has finished running. OK, so if I extract totally arbitrarily the second element of my list data, which was empty, but I have now filled with the data I want, uh, I have uh, the date, major, and PI for uh, the second of these theses. So great. Uh, now, I have a list. List data is a list. So um, I have a list of these little uh, matrices. A list of matrices is not uh, super convenient. So I'm going to compact them all in a data frame. For this, I'm using R bind data frame, uh, list data being my object. But I'm going to pass this into do call because I want to uh, 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 create a data frame with all of my hundred little matrices. So this will turn a list of my of little uh, matrix matrices uh, into one data frame. So in uh, R, the de default data, data frame, uh, which I've just created, is uh, totally fine, but if you print it, it's going to print the entire data frame, and so you're going to have a crazy output. So I want to print only the head of my data frame, because I don't want 100 lines that are going to clutter my console. So I pass this into head, and uh, head by default prints the first six rows. You can change that uh, by passing a, an option. So here I have the first six elements with the date, the major, and the PI. You can recognize our test um, first URL at the top, uh, but uh, now we have them for all 100 theses on that, uh, on that page. Um, there is a, uh, if you like the tidyverse, uh, there is a tibble package that has a as tibble function that allows to turn a data frame into a tibble. And a tibble is the tidyverse version of the data frame. It's still a data frame, but it has slightly different characteristics. And one of them is that it will, by default, only print the first few lines, which is much more convenient. So let's do that. Let's turn result into a tibble. So I'm, again, using the pipe. Uh, I'm very... Um, Tidyverse oriented in this workshop. I'm passing uh, my object result into as table from the table package and reassigning it to itself. So I'm um, uh, transforming the object result, basically. Um, this syntax, if you're intrigued by this, this is because I loaded a single package at the top with the library function, I loaded the library harvest. I could have loaded the library table over there. But because I was going to use a single function from the table package, I decided to do this instead. This uh, colon colon notation allows to use uh, a function from a package you haven't loaded into your session. So the function is as table, the package is table. And I need this particular syntax because I haven't loaded the table package in the session. Um, Marie. So now, in fact, mm -hmm. I apologize to interrupt. Um, I just wanted to remind you that your next session starts in seven minutes. I know, I know, but we're, we're there, we're there. OK, yeah. <laughs> perfect. Uh, so let's print our result again. So uh, now it is a table. So uh, by default, I don't have to pass it into head. It prints the 10 first uh, rows. Um, the um, uh, formatting is a little bit different. It gives us information as to the data type of every single column. So uh, we can see that they're all characters, which is great. Uh, we have the size. So it's a table, or think of it as a data frame of 100 by 3, so 100 rows, 100 data points, and three columns. Okay. And uh, just to make it look a little bit nicer, I could capitalize the, the headers. Um, so I, to do that, I can create a vector uh, 
with uh, C is the combined function in R that allows to create a vector with um, uh, multiple elements. So uh, date, major, and PI, so three characters. So this is a vector if I run just C uh, uh, and all that. This is, uh, oh, I forgot a parenthesis. I didn't highlight the parenthesis. So this is simply a vector with those three character elements. If I, oh no, oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm really not used to uh, R Studio. So if I, I'm gonna copy this, paste it there. Oh, I can't, it doesn't. Uh, fast. There we go. Okay, so if I assign this uh, vector, character vector of, uh, uh, yeah, this uh, character vector to the function names of result, that will change the names of result. Result, remember, is my table. Uh, names of result is the uh, the headers of the columns, the names of the variables. So if I assign this vector, basically I'm changing the names to these new values. And so now if I print result, this is my final result. I have this nice uh, data frame with some uh, names that I'm happy with and all of this information. So basically uh, I have scraped uh, the information I wanted from all of the sites that were linked from this uh, front site. If you have questions, please type them in the Slack channel. I do have, um, as Megan mentioned, uh, another workshop that starts in uh, four minutes now, so I have to leave in a hurry. But um, go over the content, play with it. You can stay logged in the RStudio server to go over it and experiment uh, for the rest of the day if you wish. And I will look at the Slack channel in a few hours to answer questions. But I have to leave now. Thank so thank you very much. Sorry, my explan explanations were a bit messy and confused at time. Um, it's my first time giving this workshop and I'm a bit tired. It's been a busy week, so I've been uh, I haven't been very clear. Uh, I apologize for that, but hopefully, I still have managed to convey the uh, the, the message and uh, eventually made it clear. Okay, it excellent workshop. Thank you so much, Marie, uh, for this. And um, and as you mentioned, like if anyone has any question, further questions, they can put it in the Slack channel. Um, and um, <clears throat> thank you all for um, for coming to the session. Thank you so much.